Game Chef and Bertie here! Yes! Yes, Fidel's here with the top five mistakes new players make in Fire Emblem Three Houses. Yes, so number five, not having a healer or not positioning your healer properly. Very true. So firstly, having a healer is essential for any army that wants to keep its units alive. There's only so many times you can use a healing item, uh, typically a vulnerary, before you run out of uses. And besides that, you'll waste valuable turns ordering your wounded units to heal themselves with a vulnerary when your healer could have done the job for them, allowing them to in attack instead on that same turn. On top of that, a vulnerary only restores a meagre 10 HP, whereas healing with a healer typically restores more especially as your healer levels up. Right, so any particular place the healer should be on the battlefield? Uh, there, that's a good question. Now, uh, firstly, before we get into that, let's say you have a dedicated healer, like Mercedes of the Blue Lions. Typically, she's going to be a priest or a bishop class, and you want to look out for the heal skill. So check out the skills of your unit and find someone who can heal. Now, it's essential to keep your healer in the right place at all times during a battle. Don't leave her way back behind the front lines. She'll be safe there, but she won't be of much use to your front line units when they need patching up, because they'll be out of her healing range. There's nothing more disappointing than losing a unit because your healer was just one space away. Exactly, that's a mistake there. Because they're often weaker, the healers, put them at the back where they're safe, of course they can't be used as you just said. That's right, absolutely useless back there. So if and when your healer learns physic, this will allow them to heal at a longer range, but you still need to be mindful of where your healer is. Your healer may also learn new skills like fortify, which can heal all your units in a wide range, and rescue, which can teleport distant allies to safety nearby. Bye. Of course, the other mistake is to have your healer too close to the front line. That's right. So basically, your healer can usually take one or two attacks, but any more than that, and you're going to lose her, especially during the early game, where she hasn't yet learned certain useful abilities like Miracle, which can keep her alive. So all in all, the best place for your healer is somewhere in the middle of your army, close enough to heal, but not so close that she can get targeted by the enemy. And it goes without saying that a healer makes the prime target for the foe. Look after her, and she'll look after you. This is definitely one unit you don't want to be without. Some people might say, well, I'd just rather have an extra attack unit instead of a healer. That's a mistake. You want to keep your army alive. Exactly. So mistake number four, in the early to mid game, assuming steel weapons are better than iron, actually, they're generally not. That's right. Many new players may assume that because steel weapons hit harder and cost more than iron ones, they must be better, right? Wrong. Although steel weapons have a higher might or attack value, they're also a lot heavier than their iron counterparts. Look at that, 6 for iron and 11 for steel, meaning your character may not be able to strike twice with them in one attack if he or she is facing an enemy with a comparatively low speed stat. Now this happens very often in Fire Emblem, which makes iron weapons almost always better, because you can very often hit twice with them. That's two chances of damage and two chances to get a critical hit in one attack. Exactly, that's the important point, isn't it? Yes, very important. Also, when you're facing certain strong units, you have to really be careful, because if your character's holding a steel weapon, like a steel axe or a steel sword, that enemy character may be able to double attack you, just because you've got a steel weapon. If you change to iron, you might only get attacked once, and therefore your character could survive. Now, another problem with steel is that your unit will sometimes be less likely to land a hit, and less likely to dodge enemy attacks while holding a steel weapon, due to the increased weight. So check out those weight stats, and also pay attention to the combat forecast to find out which weapon is the most strategically viable. Uh, also, you should note this issue applies to certain tomes too, meaning attacks like wind may sometimes be better than seemingly more powerful attacks like cutting gale, just because wind can hit twice in one attack. That's effectively double damage. Yes, indeed. So watch your weapons' materials. That's right. You know, bring steel weapons along by all means. You may find a use for them, but just be cautious using them, particularly against strong enemies. That's right. So mistake number three, getting too confident and or poorly positioning your troops. Oh, absolutely. Especially in the early game in uh, Three Houses, you're encouraged to play defensively and use defensive terrain like forests to your advantage. The game tells you this for a reason, because rushing one or two units out alone is a surefire way to get them killed. Fire Emblem rewards strategic play where you use your entire army like a team working together. In most cases, sending out a lone character commando style, no matter how strong their stats may be, will result in losing them to repeated enemy attacks, and uh, gambits in particular, which are new to this game, can cripple your unit and leave them unable to move, as well as considerably weaker for one turn. Right, so just having a bunch of good troops in a team 
poorly positioned means they're not actually that good. Uh, absolutely, that's that's a very good point as well. Whether you're attacking or defending, think carefully about where you're positioning your troops and try to advance in a way that gives all your units a chance to attack and cover each other. Sometimes you may also need to retreat if you've got some very tough enemies at you, perhaps uh, coming at one or two of your units and, and it looks like you're going to lose them, pull the troops back and get to a stronger position where all the troops can cover each other, maybe, maybe you've got forests on your side, etc and so forth. As you can see here, I got into a bit of trouble because a lot of enemy soldiers surrounded me, so I had to think very carefully about where to put my troops. So what do you do? Well, you put tougher units like knights, cavaliers and lords on the front lines, who perhaps have higher defence or protection stat, keep vulnerable damage dealers like Myrmidons a little way behind them, and back those up with archers and mages who can attack from a distance behind the safety of their allies. Now also, you should always have a backup plan to rescue a wounded unit with a friendly nearby who can come to their aid. As happened there, as you can see, Annette got into a lot of trouble, but fortunately, Dimitri was able to use a gambit and take out that archer, or at least immobilize him. Remember, you're leading an army, not one or two soldiers. Yes, positioning is key. So mistake number two, not managing experience and level ups correctly. That's right, and this really follows on for what we were just saying in the previous mistake. Don't let one of your units hog all the experience and get all the kills, while your other units just stand by and watch from a distance. I mean, sure, that unit would level up a lot and get strong, but that comes at the cost of the rest of your army being weakened and unfit for battle, because you didn't let them get any experience by taking down enemy forces. Now what's more, if your one strong unit gets into trouble during a mission, which he probably will, you'll be sure to lose, since the rest of your army wouldn't be able to put up much of a fight once your single powerful unit had to retreat. You want to keep an eye on how much experience each unit has, and if you notice one or two of your units lagging behind the others at a lower experience level than the rest, feed them some kills every now and then to bolster their stats. As you can see here, Sylvain was lagging behind a bit, so what do we do? We give him some kills, we send him up the front lines, we get him some combat experience to get him some level ups and hopefully bring him in line with the other troops. Ideally, you want your entire army to level up pretty much evenly at the same time. You shouldn't have one unit, say for example level 30, while all the others are stuck on level 6 to 7. Yes indeed, that's a mistake you don't want to make. So last but not least, mistake number one. Do not underestimate bosses. They've underestimated me. Big mistake. That's right, this is a big mistake new players make, they just don't realise how tough bosses are. In Fire Emblem they really are difficult bosses. This should go without saying, but you wouldn't believe how easy it is for even an experienced player to lose units to these super tough boss enemies. And to make things worse, you typically fight the boss only after you've dealt with the rest of their army, meaning a lengthy restart of the entire mission if you slip up. Now boss units typically have a distinctive icon floating over them to let you know you're dealing with the leader of this particular army. They tend to be a higher level than the other enemy units on the field, and they may carry special weapons, abilities or skills that pose a serious threat to some or all of your units. Now it's important to find out whether or not the boss character moves on any given map. Uh, to do that, hover your cursor over the boss and press the A button. If their danger zone is just a few red spaces around them, then that means they don't move and you can get pretty close to them without fear of being attacked. Typically you'll find bosses don't move if they're sitting, for example, on a heel tile. They're sitting pretty there they've got a defense bonus, they've got a heal bonus so they won't move from that. Now if they do move the danger zone will be much larger and it typically means the boss will actively advance to attack any unit you place within their attack range. Sometimes they'll even advance if you just place a unit within the attack range of one of their nearby henchmen. Now this can be extremely hazardous not only for the unit in range but also for the rest of your army if they happen to be nearby since the boss might decide to move on to attack another of your units on their next turn. Yes and another mistake of course is not first cleaning up the other units before you deal with the boss. That's true, so if you if you know, skip past certain units on the way to the boss, you might find yourself fighting a super tough boss on one front and his henchmen on the other front, and that's the last thing you want, believe me. So clean up all the other units on the map first, or at least as many as possible. Then, to prepare for the final assault, position your entire army just outside the attack range of the boss. Once they're in position, end your player phase so they'll be ready to move on the next turn. Now the boss will typically skip their turn without moving if you did it right. 
Now on your turn, you can now choose which of your units to send in and dispatch the boss. Pay close attention to the combat forecast, particularly the boss's attack power, hit rate and critical chance, and attack with your units who deal the most damage and have the lowest chance to be killed by the boss's counterattack. With a bit of planning, you can do it. As you can see here, Annette was just a great choice to attack this particular boss, and then we can send in one more unit to clean him up after that initial strong damage he took there. And there you go, Fadels, there you have it. These are the top five mistakes players make in Fire Emblem Three Houses and how not to make them. Exactly, so by not making these mistakes, you'll play a better game. That's right, you won't have to use the Divine Pulse and you'll have a much better time getting through this difficult but extremely rewarding game. This has been Professor Game Chef and Birdie bringing you a Fire Emblem Three Houses lesson. Thank you guys for joining us and we look forward to seeing you again in the next exciting video. Bye-bye, I'm Bye. I like this.